Okay, let's do an example, uh, example calculation, and I want to <clears throat> work out the theoretical density of aluminum. So we're going to do that, and we're going to be um, given a few things. First of all, aluminum is FCC. So when I solve a problem, I like to do a quick sketch. You can see, okay, that's not my most beautiful work, but uh, nonetheless, there it is. And we're going to put some... Positions. It, it still helps. You know, how long has this taken me to do? I don't know, a few seconds. Um, there's the hidden one, the back face, and the back left side face. So that's FCC. You know, it, it, it gets the pen moving. It reduces your anxiety a bit, filling up some of the space uh, on the page. Anyway, so there you go. That's what I recommend you do. Um, and <clears throat> what else do we have? Well, we have the atomic weight of aluminum, um, <clears throat> which is equal to 26.98 two grams per mole, or the molar mass. Uh, we also have the atomic radius um, of aluminum, which is 143 picometers. So that's 10, 10 to the minus 12 meters. Okay. <clears throat> and what we want to do is calculate the theoretical density. So I'll write out the equation here. It's going to be the number of atoms times the molar mass divided by the volume of the unit cell and Avogadro's number there. So what I like to do is draw a little vertical line and then summarize what I know. So I've done my little sketch. I know that there are, in fact, four atoms inside the FCC unit cell, four complete spheres. Um, I have the molar mass, 26.982. Um, you know what I should do here just to show you my technique, my, my, the way I like to approach this. 143 picometers. I'm going to write it out like that. Um, <clears throat> And then when I write them over here beside my little vertical line, I always like to convert to base SI units. You don't have to do this, but it's handy, I think. Um, and so Avogadro's number, 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd. Occasionally a student, I think, gets nervous and puts negative 23. Remember, it's a massive number. It's going to be a big number, so it can't be a fraction. It's got to be positive 23, 10 to the 23. And that is count per mole. Okay, so what are we missing? Well, we're missing, clearly, the volume of the unit cell. Well, what's the volume of the unit cell? The volume of the unit cell is going to be this lattice parameter here squared. A cubed, I mean, a cubed. Uh, do we know a directly? Uh, no, we, we don't. We don't uh, yet. We have the radius. So what we need to also do is say, all right, well, what does the front face of an FCC unit cell actually look like? if I drew the atoms instead of just as little dots as they actually were or are when they are in the front face. So they actually touch like this. As you uh, may know, they touch across what we say is the face diagonals. And I like to use my yellow color or orange color for that. So they touch across the face diagonals and there's one radius, two, three, four. So there's four atomic radii there. <coughs> And then we had this distance here as a, and this is a. So a squared plus a squared, this Pythagoras, is going to be equal to 4r all squared, or 2a squared is equal to 16r squared, or a is equal to 2 root 2r. So that's our relationship between a and r, and now we can write the volume in terms of a, and so it's going to be 2 root 2r, all cu uh, cubed. <clears throat> so that's uh, excellent. We're doing pretty well. So now we can actually take our, we can write out our theoretical density in the form here where we've derived it in terms of everything that we have. All right, so I always like to do this, write it out, derive it in terms of uh, all the val uh, values that we have. Of course, we have R. It was up there. It was 143 picometers. I'll remind you, 143 picometers. I like to, at this point, so I don't make a silly conversion. Um, oops, 10 to, again, uh, 10 to the minus 12 meters. I put it into base SI units. All right, and now I can go ahead and... Oh. The other thing I can do is I can just look at the dimensions here really quickly. Now, if I put them in base SI units with confidence, I can just proceed through and know it will come out to 
uh, base SI units here, grams per cubic meter, but just to be safe, I can go over and I can say um, 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 molar mass has grams per mole, and then um, we got meters cubed come from the RD, uh, radius cubed, and number uh, per mole for Avogadro's number, moles cancel out, um, number n, sorry, had units of number, if you will, and so that cancels out. We end up with grams per cubic meter. So we'll have to make sure we convert that to something that makes it that's sensible for dimension, uh, for for density. So for um, 26. Point, what was it? Uh, 982. That was our um, molar mass for aluminum, and then we have down here two root two. And then 143 times 10 to the minus 12. And that whole thing is cubed times 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd. That's how I like to do it. I write it all out carefully like that. And then <coughs> do the calculation, which you'll see is 2.7 times 10 to the 6. And remember, you know you've put these in base SI units, so it has to be grams per cubic meter. Now that's not a very conventional unit for density, kilograms per cubic meter or grams per cubic centimeter would be more conventional. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say one meter for every 100 centimeters and that's cubed so we're dividing by 10 to the 6 so it's just 2.7 uh, grams per cubic centimeter and that is the theoretical density for aluminum. Thanks.